So let's do some examples now for question three, uh, and that deals with the relationships inside specializations and how specializations work in their own terms. And let's get going straight away with the boundary strength. Now, as we know, you can have a solid boundary strength and an open boundary strength inside a specialization. So this is between the sub-disciplines inside a specialization. Now, here's an account of uh, a solid boundary. Um, urban geography is the particular part of human geography that concerns itself specifically with cities. It is part of the larger discipline of geography and it overlaps with cultural geography and urban sociology. However, urban geography is distinct from all other sub-disciplines within geography. And there you have it. Distinct on the one side, particular on the other. Uh, it's the attempt to show that uh, urban geography has a solid boundary in relation to the other subsections of geography itself. Or, and interestingly enough, within a section of geography in its own terms, in other words, uh, within human geography, because you also have uh, physical geography. Now, uh, let's take a look at a more open boundary. And here we have an attempt to kind of show that as geography has developed, it's tended to become more integrated. And it's quite an interesting account. Uh, and it starts off with the definition of the word geography, uh, meaning earth description. And the subject has its roots in ancient Greece and was established as a modern academic discipline in the mid-1800s. And then in those dark ages, the subject was divided into an earth science, physical geography, and a social science, human geography. But now in our new modern times, Oh, it's very different. Now there is a shared ambition to once again see geography as a whole in order to understand how humans shape and use the landscape. Why? Why is there this uh, need for integration? Well, there's been modern demands, increasing uh, demands of social planning, environmental issues that need to hold together the complexity of geography in, in, in a new way, rather than splitting its tasks off into different domains. Now that gives us a clear account of uh, open and solid boundaries uh, inside geography, inside the sub-disciplines of geography. But let's now kind of try to get a sense of how geography works in its own terms as a specialization. Let's go into the mechanics of geography. Now to do this, I've gone all the way back to 1919. Uh, and I think this is a particularly um, wonderfully profound account of how geography is actually made up. And the first thing uh, you notice is, is that there's a number of other specializations outside of geography that are crucial in their own right. Uh, biology, history, economics, meteorology, geology, astronomy. And the argument is, is that all of those disciplines in their own right have a crossover point where geography takes something from them. Uh, uses them in a certain way. So, for example, with biology, geography takes it and it becomes biogeography. From history, it gets political geography. From economics, it gets commercial uh, geography. And the concern becomes, well, if geography actually makes itself up by taking so much from all these other disciplines, what makes geography geography? And how do we understand uh, the boundary lines of how geography operates in terms of its circumference, in terms of what makes it what geography is. Now I'd like to take a look at a couple of uh, quotes from this particular text to get a sense of, of how we would analyze geography using some of the tools of the book. Now the first thing is this account of the difference in 1919 between uh, geography in the USA and in Europe. And this is what he has to say about the USA. He says, there is an implied dread that if geography accepts the work and uses the language of other sciences, geography itself will be dismembered. So there's a fear of opening the boundary line 
between geography and other disciplines in case those other disciplines will invade and take geography over. Now, it's quite funny that this was written in 1919. Well, not funny, it's fairly tragic in some ways after the First World War. Whereas in, in Europe, a very different scenario held. There, scholarly geographic treatises from Europe may contain long lists of botanical names. So there, the opening of the boundary is considered a strength. It's considered something which is fertile. The ability to use other disciplines in their own right in biology, in, ge in geography, is something that's productive. It allows for cross-fertilization within geography itself. Uh, secondly, uh, take a look at this account of how geography actually then works with uh, the other disciplines to make itself what it is. If the geographer speaks of soils, the agriculturist knows more about soils. If he speaks of mines, well, the geologist knows more about mines. If the reference be to manufacturing, the economist's knowledge is more thorough. So you can begin to sense an anxiety within geography of what it is that makes up the inner core of geography if all the topics and data that it works with have other expert knowledge systems which do it better than it does. So what makes geography geography? What gives it its specific focus? Uh, and here we have the attempt to give the account. And we're getting to the inner light of geography. We're getting to why you would study geography in its own terms. And he gives this wonderful account. He says, uh, the one that is first, last, and always geography, and nothing else, do, 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 right, is the study of areas in their compositeness or complexity. That is regional geography. It's the study of area. It's a study of areas, regions. Nothing else can do that. Nothing else can take a look at a region in all its wonderful complexity and all its different elements. All those other disciplines focus in on one thing to do with an area. It is geography that looks at an area in its fullness in its complexity, and no other discipline can do that. And that is what makes geography a singular. That is what gives geography its inner focus. That is what you turn towards and study because it is beautiful in its own light. So the center of geography is the study of areas. Generally, of course, in relation to man, but the comprehensive study of an uninhabitable region would still be geography and it would still be important and it would still be wonderful because the guiding focus of geography is not something outside of it, not something that gives it uh, some other importance because it's useful. The reason why you study it is to understand how region and areas actually work in their own terms. And there you have that wonderful account of how geography operates as a singular. Now, Let's try and uh, put that in context and see how we would then work with geography as a, as a region. Now, bear in mind again that what a region does is a region takes singulars and uses them in a way which turns them outwards towards the world for practical purpose. So let's see how geography turns to the world. And here we have an account uh, in England. I think this is the Royal Geographic Society, and I think it does a particularly... Um, uh, I don't want to be cruel here, a particularly weak account of how geography could work, but maybe it's a true account. Let's see. How does it turn to the world? Well, they say firstly in terms of career paths. This is your first option. You can have a career position directly related to their geographical knowledge or skills, right? So now, what, does, what is geography going to do for you? Well, a first degree in geography is an entry point to many careers. For example, town and transport planning, chartered surveying, land and water management, tourism, conservation, housing and social welfare. These are all things which you could study in their own right. They, they, actual, uh, they are qualifications themselves. Why would you do geography to study these? And they kind of concede to that. They say at some point uh, their careers will require further qualifications uh, leading, for example, to uh, chartered status. So if you are doing this at some other point, you are going to need 
to actually study further. You're going to have to qualify further. You're going to have to use your geography as a singular and turn it outwards into a profession which works with geography only as one small point. But sadly, sadly, even more than that, often they don't even need geography in the first place. You'll land up just kind of maybe getting uh, entry into that uh, other alternative career. So they're kind of scratching around now for, for something to say about why geography is useful. Because bear in mind, as a singular, geography focuses in on itself. And in our modern world, professions and the world of work have become increasingly important. Uh, and that's why across the world, geography departments at universities are getting closed down because they don't offer you a career path. So the argument is that geography might provide you with transferable skills. And this is how they put it. A career position which uses geographers wide range of transferable skills. OK, the majority of geographers choose careers which make use of their transferable skills, their transferable geographical skills. What are those? Graduates from other disciplines will also enter these areas. Geography doesn't even give you some exclusive right to this. These include information technology, administration and management, the financial sector, marketing, research, industry and manufacturing. So geography gives you an entry point into areas which really have nothing to do with geography, but they give you some kind of transferable set of skills which could help. Transferable skills you could have learned in so many other different places. And that's the sad reason why currently geography as a singular, as this wonderful focus on place, on region, on the complexity of we as human beings and of how the earth actually works with its own locatedness, its own space, uh, in all its wonderful complexity, is dying a death within our universities and within our schools. Because the argument for why it's worthwhile has to revert to how it can either be used as a part of a region, as a part of another profession which turns outwards to the world, or simply as a set of generic skills which would help you to get any job. And why would you spend years and years studying geography for a bunch of transferable skills?